All right, guys, what's going on? Welcome in. So in this one, I really wanted to point the spotlight at Mike LaFleur, okay, because he needs to be talked about. He needs to. You look at what this Jets offense has really become since the earlier parts of the season. I mean, this is a real NFL offense here, okay? And I get that the ranks might say, hey, we're still below average, uh, and I get it. But I will say we are doing this. We are getting in the end zone. We're scoring touchdowns. We're moving the football. With not only just a rookie quarterback, but a huge, huge list of injured players. No Mekhi Becton. George Fant's uh, season just ended. Michael Carter has missed a lot of time. Elijah Moore has missed a lot of time. Corey Davis, our wide receiver one, our prized free agent acquisition that we brought in on the offensive side of the football, is out for the year. Not to mention Connor McGovern has missed time, Jamison Crowder, Tevin Coleman. It's almost like uh, playing football, you know, at the park after school, back in elementary school. It's just like nobody really knows who's going to show up. Uh, sometimes you'll see some familiar faces, but it's not always going to be the same roster. That's what it feels like. So I give a lot of credit to Mike LaFleur. Just being able to navigate through turbulent waters, if you will. I mean, the injured players are one thing. Starting a rookie quarterback is another thing. Uh, having the league's worst defense is another thing. I mean, that's always in the back of his mind, knowing that the opposing offense is probably be uh, probably going to be scoring a lot of points, a lot of touchdowns. So you kind of have to match that. But the one thing that we do have to uh, remember or keep in mind is the fact that this is Mike LaFleur's first crack at everything as well. Developing a rookie quarterback to be the franchise guy, installing an offense for the first time, calling plays for the first time. These are a lot of responsibilities for a guy that hasn't really been a part of the NFL for, you know, 45 years or anything like that. He is not some veteran. Yes, he's, you know, a younger guy and he's been on a multitude of different teams and he has, you know, worked with some awesome minds. But, I mean, this is LaFleur's show. He is the puppet master, the driver, and we're now seeing the fruits of his labor. Okay, so really there's three main areas where I've been totally impressed with. Number one, the growth. Growth of the offense. This offense that we're seeing now against the Bucks, week 17, week 16, it looks so much better. I mean, this looks like a well-oiled machine. Everything looks in sync, in rhythm, as opposed to week two against the Patriots. Complete disaster. Uh, even the struggles in week one against the Panthers, week three where we put up zero points against the Broncos, the Falcons game, the game where we got blown out against the uh, new uh, Patriots uh, post by 54 to 13, I believe the final score was. This offense just looks so much better, so much better. Okay, so we're seeing an improvement in points, touchdowns, yards, everything is trending up, and that is a really, really good sign. We've also seen a lot of growth from the play calling department as well. Uh, I mean, over these last handful of weeks, I feel like we've done a really good job of keeping defenses off balance, swapping guys in, swapping guys out. They don't really know what's coming. They don't really know who's getting the football. And of course, this offense is kind of a smoke and mirror show to begin with, especially pre-snap. But uh, man, compared to the earlier and even the middle parts of the season, the play calling has been incredible. A lot of creativity from the actual individual play calls. Uh, totally, totally impressive. The second main area is consistency. Consistency. Okay, we're not seeing these huge erratic spikes, these peaks and valleys uh, from this Jets offense. It's not one 54-point uh, performance, and then we're following that up with a three-point game, a six-point game. No, it's kind of what you see is what you get on a week-to-week -week basis with this team. We're doing a really good job of not turning the football over. That has been a consistent theme over these last, I want to say, four, five weeks here. Over the last month, we have not really turned the ball over as an offense that is really important and I actually do want to credit Mike Clay here brought up a great point okay two this Jets offense has had two touchdowns in 13 of 16 games offensively 31 touchdowns since week three which is ranked 17th in the NFL I mean that of course you know it's not elite it's not a you know the it's not the end goal obviously but we're getting better over time and even though they are baby steps they're baby steps in the right direction and the third area is the development of players on this offense. I can't think of one offensive starter that is consistently getting worse and worse and worse as the season goes on. I can't think of one guy. All right. I'm looking at some of these players like Zach Wilson playing his best best football of his rookie season. We talked about him not turning the football over, but he's also shown so much more. The accuracy, the decision making, the poise, he's hanging in the pocket, he's going through his reads, he's finding the open guy, awesome, awesome stuff. 
but I do understand that Zach Wilson is, you know, of course, the most popular player on the team, uh, quarterback, rookie, a lot of hype, so he's going to get just naturally a lot of credit anyway, but I want to give some credit to some other players, some other units on this team. I mean, Elijah Moore has really burst onto the scene in the latter half of the season. Same with Michael Carter. I mean, he has really emerged as a true RB1 that was kind of the hope for him coming in from North Carolina. A lot of Jets fans really, really liked what he brought to the table, but now we're finally starting to see like this guy can actually be a real threat. He has the potential to be a top 10 running back in this league. I don't think that's a that that's a stretch to say. But you look at this offensive line, they are playing some really, really good football. Okay, we're seeing a ton of different lineups. Dan Feeney at center, Connor, McDerm uh, Connor McDermott at tackle, uh, LTD at right guard. He has been a massive acquisition at that right guard position. I mean, huge. What a steal from Joe Douglas's end from Kansas City here. Uh, just, I mean, that's a whole, I could go on about that for 15 minutes. Just that trade alone and how much is it's, it's meant to this offensive line. But man, over, again, I know Zach Wilson has definitely, I mean, he's taken some massive steps forward, but we have to lump in some of these other players into the same category of constantly improving. Okay, so my hat goes off to LaFleur. I think he has done a tremendous, tremendous job. He has had a lot on his plate, but he has handled it uh, really, really well. Okay, I mean, he is... It's unbelievable when you think about it. And of course, you know, he's not rolling out a top five offense, a top 10 offense or anything like that. I get it. But we're seeing the potential in the future for something like that, if that makes sense. So let me know your thoughts down below in the comment section. I would love to hear your take on Mike LaFleur, where you kind of stand with LaFleur right now, how confident you feel in Mike's abilities to lead the offense moving forward for years to come. Hopefully he doesn't, uh, you know, get plucked by another team to go be a head coach somewhere in like two years, three years. That would be horrible. But uh, I guess if that's the case, we just have to adjust. Anyway, thanks so much for watching. And as always, go Jets.